People have this arrogance where they're like, if I have to communicate, it's not real. In this world, especially because of movies and shows and songs, it's taught us that if we have to explain it, then that person doesn't love you. They should be able to mind read and predict and stuff, and then it creates the ingredients for a distant relationship. Communicating effectively is essential. Why do we try to change people from who they are to fit our world? Because we're too insecure to walk away. Wow. Waiting for them to change is just waiting oh for the God. divorce. When you enter a relationship, a part of that should be to respect it enough to let go of relationships that don't serve the new relationship in a way that's yeah. going to be constructive. Just because I have the ability to have a very platonic relationship with an ex doesn't mean I should have the willingness to do it if it disrespects my current relationship. How many people in relationships feel alone in the relationship? I would say, um, particularly in the cultures where we live now, I think majority of them feel alone. And the reason being is I think you gotta have a dream. The school of greatness. Really? <laughs> yeah. Please welcome Lewis House. I've interviewed a lot of people over the last 10 years, and typically when someone has a lot of wisdom like yourself, they they don't get to wisdom because everything was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, everything was happy and yeah. safe and comfortable and life was good. Yeah. There's usually some challenge trauma breakdown at some stage of their life you know if they're maybe they're in a marriage that went one way they got divorced and they realized like oh there was a pattern that i lived or something happened and mm -hmm. so i'm going to go down this path because i had this experience yeah it was a childhood thing or something like that uh -huh. what do you think makes you so wise around these concepts of relationships and also to create context you're not married you don't have kids yeah so there's going to be people saying, well, she doesn't, you know, she's speaking about this, but she hasn't really experienced relationship yeah. at this level. Uh -huh. What makes you qualified to have this wisdom uh -huh. with where you're at in your life? I don't know if it makes me qualified, but I would say that there has to be a healthy level of trauma to ignite this level of curiosity towards human nature. And I think in my particular case, I faced a lot of neglect, particularly from siblings. I was very much like the middle child, very much neglected, very much by myself. Um, and the thing that was really bizarre for me is I'd be such a big personality outside of the home. I had so many friends and so many people would gravitate towards me. And I would go in my home and my siblings would totally ignore me and act like I don't exist. And I would be spend countless amount of time by myself in my bedroom while they would have a great time and I could hear them laughing and joking and stuff and I was automatically kind of in between two worlds and so what would happen is I understood that the reaction I was getting outside of the home was not the same as I'm getting in the home and it was causing something in me I remember feeling like I know I'm worthy of love because everybody else seems to love me loads but I don't feel worthy of love because the people I want it from don't give it to me. So because I had this kind of dichotomy of like self-esteem, I then realized how self-sabotaging I can be and how difficult I can be. I, in so many relationships when people would be so low, and even to this day, like if somebody compliments me, I find it so difficult to accept a compliment and I start to dislike the person who's complimenting me. Really? Absolutely. So if I don't want to be your friend, I'll be nice exactly. to you. Exactly. All my, all, <laughs> all my closest friends. If I don't want to be your friend, exactly. be nice to exactly. you. Exactly. It's the quickest way to get me to dislike you is to give me compliments. Really? Absolutely. All of my closest friends are hypercritical of me and I keep it that way they'll say to me that looks bad or you look terrible there or you've gained weight well, I think <laughs> honesty and honesty feedback is, is great yeah. you know is also a great resource for a friend as opposed yeah. to over complimenting something that's not uh, true maybe yeah. so there's some you know, there's some element of balance, in, the balance yeah. in there but uh, there, there's a strong dislike towards people who compliment me a lot because a part of me believes they're lying to me and it would probably be because at home I never got a single compliment till this day I don't think I've ever had a compliment so I think what happened is my home life and my self-esteem were so uh, separated from my confidence I had loads and loads of confidence but no real self-esteem and I saw how on the surface I come across really well put together and really like uh, you know confident all these things but when you get to know me especially when the way my partner knows me they see all of these insecurities and all of this pain and all of this thing and this like how, that, that Saudi I met and the Saudi that like is now in love is two different people really and me realizing that made me kind of go down this journey of understanding human behavior in a way that I guess requires a bit more empathy than somebody who would have it completely perfect yes yeah, so yeah. you really 
you've really researched a lot. There. Yeah, did that do that so the same for you when you with Absolutely. your children? Absolutely. I yeah. mean, again, being the youngest of four and kind of being feeling like I was always the one 